All right, welcome back to uh, History and Coffee. And uh, today I'm going to try to answer the question of why um, uh, these percussion revolvers tend to shoot, like, really high. Um, anybody who owns a shoots them, you know, um, you'll, you'll notice a lot of times at, at what we would consider normal handgun distances now, they, they tend to shoot, you know, six, eight inches high, depending on um, caliber and powder charge, etc. Um, and uh, believe it or not, there's a pretty um, interesting sort of historical contextual reason for that that I'm going to get into. But first, you know, um, if you're dropping by for this video, uh, consider, you know, giving it a like and uh, subscribing to the channel for, um, for more stuff about um, 19th century firearms as well as, you know, history and all kinds of other shit. So, um, yeah. Anyway. So really the question of you know why do these shoot high the, the short answer is they don't they actually shoot where they're meant to shoot and uh, where they're meant to shoot is uh, really between 75 and uh, 50 yards in fact um, you know in the 19th century um, as with the modern uh, reproductions we have here they're factory sighted from anywhere from 75 to 50 yards and the answer to why that is, is the, the long complicated one. So um, we're gonna hop into the, the way back machine and uh, talk about um, early, uh, you know, cal cav cavalry ta uh, tactics and sort of like the military doctrine. Um, so really before the invention of gunpowder, um, you know, you had infantry, you had cavalry, you know, just like today. Um, in, in the most simplest terms, the job of a cavalryman was to leave his lines, and I know there's a lot more to it than that, you know, they had other jobs besides this, but their, their main objective in battle was to leave their lines, you know, and engage with the enemy line, usually with a saber or a lance. And before the invention of gunpowder, this was a lot more effective. Um, they really had didn't have much to worry about besides maybe arrows, crossbows, um, you know, trebuchet, things like that, sort of primitive projectile weapons. In that point when they left their lines until they came into contact with the enemy lines and could engage with their saber or their lance, they, they didn't have much to worry about. And in fact that was very intimidating, um, you know, uh, you know, if you put yourself in that position, imagine being, you know, say a foot soldier, a pikeman, and here's a, um, you know, a wall of men on horses with, with swords out shouting, and you really can't do any, anything about it, more or less, until they're right on top of you. So, when gunpowder came around, suddenly these cavalrymen had a, a place where not only were they were they vulnerable, but now they were the ones who couldn't engage until they were they were right on top of the enemy line. So essentially you can get, as an infantryman now, you can start picking these guys off their horses, you know, at 50, 60 yards before they can close in on you and start engaging you with their saber or their lance. And this led to sort of a little arms race. Um, and what happens is, you know, of course, the handgun. Now, now, of course, there's some stuff with carbines and things like that, too. But generally, doctrinally speaking, uh, a cavalryman would engage with his carbine from foot. It was There's later stuff where, you know, it's horse-mounted carbines and, of course, into the modern century. But I'm talking about 18th, 19th century here. The real sort of gunpowder firearm weapon of the cavalry was the handgun. And... Um, of course, at the time, these were, you know, single-shot flintlock handguns. But what it did was it gave the cavalryman something to defend himself with in that gap, if you will. Before he could engage with his saber or his lance, he had the ability to return fire at these infantrymen engaging him with muskets and, you know, give himself a better chance, sort of get their heads down, disrupt their lines, and, um, you know, not just be a sitting duck out there on his horse. So when these revolvers came along, um, these were really perfect. Um, 
because now you had multiple shots for that window um, of engagement. And in a lot of cases, these early, the early revolvers, especially the 44 caliber ones like the Walker um, and the Dragoons, were almost, especially in the case of the Texas Rangers, were outright meant to replace the carbine altogether. So now you had these guys with these two huge pistols. It's sort of the reason why they, you know, they're designed to hold 50 grains, not 60. They were designed to hold 50 grains. The Walkers do not put 60 grains in a Walker. Um, Samuel Colt um, wrote a couple letters bitching about you know, guys blowing his guns up because they were putting 60 grains in them. But anyway, um, it made them more effective. Now they had this ability to, you know, you know, with two of these pistols, they had 12 shots to get them across that, that defensive gap into an offensive position where the pistols would then go back in the palm the holsters and they could, uh, you know, draw and engage with their saber. And really, in a nutshell, that's why, you know, we, we think it's a little nuts now to have a, a pistol that's sighted in for, you know, 75 yards. But that was exactly what they were meant for back then. Um, and obviously, you know, that carried over into the modern repercussions, uh, the modern reproductions. So, um, yeah, essentially, your pistol doesn't shoot high, you're just not you know, galloping towards a, um, a line of en enemy infantry trying to get their heads down, you know, at 60 yards before you attack them with your saber. So uh, hopefully that answers that question. Um, and uh, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.